Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video, we're gonna get some practice writing to files. And as a reminder, this is for the complete newbie, so this is gonna be the basics, how to get started, and all that good stuff. But first, you gotta check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase, and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So when we are writing two files, we need to include F stream, which is a lot like IO stream, but instead of input output, it's file stream. Now, when we are working with console in and console out, that is an object that's made available to us. So the object has already been created. It was instantiated from a class for us. Now, when we're working with files, that's an extra step we're going to have to do ourselves. So that's why this might look a little bit different than how we work with console in, specifically C out and C in. So what do you need to do? You need to create a new object, and the way you do that is you say standard OF stream, that is the class the object comes from, and the name of this object is going to be file. So this is how you instantiate a class into an object. So we're basically having an instance of OF stream, and that instance is called file. You can name it whatever you want, if you want to name it tacos or jelly bean, whatever you want. Now, the way you open a file, once you've created the file object, you say file.open and you pass in the file name. So for example, you can pass in hello.txt. Now the file extension there, that's just convention. You can do whatever you want. You don't even have to put anything. You can just say hello. That's perfectly valid inside of Mac and Linux. Windows is a little odd, and file extensions actually mean things in Windows. But inside a Mac, it doesn't really matter. It's just purely a convention thing. Usually we'll have .txt for plain text files. Now you'll often see a similar way of doing this, and that is to just put this right after the file name. So that's going to look like this here. So either one, it's totally up to you. This is a little shorter, so this is what you'll see a lot online. Now when you're done with the file, sometimes you will see file.close. It's not super important to do this because it will do it automatically for you, but if you wanna be very explicit, and there are some certain circumstances where you will need to do this, but those are not things that we're going to be encountering. But if you ever need to explicitly close a file, you can do it with the dot .close method. Now the cool thing here is that this hello.txt does not exist, but whenever you're writing to a file, it will automatically be created if it doesn't exist. So it's like a shortcut. So check this out. We can go into our files with this button over here on Visual Studio Code. Might be a little bit different for whatever editor you're using. And you can see we have this io.cpp. Now when I compile and run this and I press enter, you can see this hello.txt just generates on the left. If you didn't see that, go back a couple seconds, watch it again. You can see this is just an empty file, has absolutely nothing in it but we are going to start outputting stuff to this file. So we can just close out of that for now. We'll get back to that. Actually, you know what? Let's open it and let's just leave it open for now. All right, we'll get back to that, but we don't have to go back to our files. Once we have this object called file, we can use that as if it is C out. So all we have to do is say file and then use two less than signs and put whatever we want here and it will go to that file. So for example, I could say, hey, now when I compile and run, check this out. You go to hello.txt, Look what we got there, hey, that's pretty cool. So compared to C out, the only real difference is a little bit on how you create it. But once you actually have the file, you use it as if it's C out. You know, you would just be able to do standard C out just like that, but now instead all you have to do is say file. Let's go through a little bit more of a complex example where we want to print a couple names to this file. Let's say we create a vector and we'll make this of type string and we'll call it names. In order to do this, we need to include vector, and we'll wanna make sure we compile using C++11. Let's add some data to this names vector. So to do that, we just say names.pushback. And I'm just gonna do that for a couple names here. There we go. So we have three names inside of this vector called names, and we can iterate through these and output them to the file. So we can use a range-based for loop for this. So we could say for, what is their type? Well, they are of type string, and we'll just call it name, and this comes from the names vector. 
Then inside of the loop body, all we have to do is say file and output the name to the file. When we're done, we can output an end line. So it will look like this. Now when we compile and run, let's see if it works. Oh yeah, I literally forgot to do the C++11 thing. There we go. All right, now when we compile and run, now let's check out hello.txt. And there you go, we got a couple of names in our hello.txt file. Now let's go back to our code. Just as an overview, we open the file, we add a bunch of names to this vector, then we loop through that vector and output them to the file. And then at the end, we close the file. Once again, this is technically optional. The only real difference is it has to do with errors. If you get errors, closing the file manually will allow you to get those errors. If you want to know more info about that, look up the close method for file output and see what people have to say about it. But just to prove it to you guys, you can leave this off of here and you can still compile and run and it works just fine. Now we ran it and I want you guys to notice something. When we go to hello.txt, it did not add three names. It replaced the old three and wrote them again. So that is the thing. Every time you run this application, it's going to overwrite what is in this hello.txt file. There is a way around that. If you go back to your code, when we open this file, we can add a little bit of something, something right here. So if you want to append, you can have another argument in here, and that is going to be standard iOS app for append. Now let's give it a try. When we run this now, go to hello.txt, you can see it actually added those three names to the file. And every single time we write this, it's going to add three more names. Let's see how many names we can put on there. Yeah, so that's pretty fun. Now let's go back to the code. My computer's starting to heat up, so let me try to get through this before my computer explodes. <laughs> when you open a file, you can actually check if the file was successfully opened. So to do that, you can do that inside of an if statement. And what you can do is say file.isOpen. This will return true if it opens successfully. And just to show you guys, we'll just do an output here. And now let's compile and run. And you can see we get that success. Now, if you want to simulate the file not being able to be opened, here's how you can do that. If you go to your files, right click hello.txt and reveal in finder. Now here's what you're going to do. You're going to right click and you're going to click get info. And this is for a Mac, obviously. You can try to figure out how to do it. Oh my golly, scare me to death. <laughs> you can try to figure out how to do this on Windows if you want, but this is for Mac operating system. All you have to do is click this little locked button. And now let's try to run this application. When we run this, you can see there is no success noob outputted. No matter how many times we run this, that's because it's not able to open the file. So in that situation, you might want to say error, unable to open the file, try again later, or something like that. Oh, now the last thing I want to talk to you guys is how to get the file name from the user. So in this case, it's hard coded, but what if we wanted to ask the user what file name to open? Now we're not going to make a pop-up where they can select it or anything crazy like that. This is in the console. We're just going to ask for the name of the file. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to get input. So we could say standard C in and store that in a variable that's going to be of type string. We'll call it file name. And we're going to store the console in inside of that variable. And we're going to do this before we open the file. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. So we want this at the top and now we can open that file name. So instead of hello.txt, all we have to do is say file name. All right, now let's see if this works. When we compile and run, it's going to ask us for a file and let's just go with mm, tacos.txt. When we press enter, you can see on the left tacos.txt appears over here. We can open that and voila, there are our names. So very cool, lots of useful information. If you're new with working with files, that should give you what you need to start building some file-driven applications. Hopefully that wasn't too much in one video. I know it was a lot, but thank you guys for getting through it. If you've enjoyed this content or if it was helpful, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out the next video where we're gonna be talking about doing the same thing, but instead of writing to files, we're going to read from files. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'll see you then.